Hello and welcome to this online lecture. Today we're going to be covering material from Math 136 for week three. My name is Patty Kokish and I'm a math instructor here at Ivy Tech. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with section 2.1. We're going to cover three sections today, 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3. So 2.1 goes over the distance formula and the midpoint formula and then shows a couple examples of each. So here we're starting with just a um, typical kind of rectangular coordinate system. And we want to plot a couple of points. So the very first thing you need to know how to do is how to plot a point. Now, I'm assuming if you're in Math 136 that you already know how to do this, but it's a good idea to review. So in purple, we're going to plot point 64. So that means on our x-axis, we're going to go over to 6, and we're going to go up 4, and we're going to put our point right there. That is in the first quadrant. Okay, now if we want to point, plot point negative 3, negative 5, we go left 3 from our origin and down 5. That's in quadrant 3. Plot point 0, 7. We're just going to go up 7. That lives right on our y-axis. And then point negative 6, 0, we're just going to go left 6 right from the origin and that's going to be right on our x-axis. So here are the different names for the quadrants. It's just one through four. The way that you can remember it is that if you kind of draw the letter C within your coordinate system, it's in that order. So it goes one, two, three, four, and you've made the letter C. This is not a big deal. It's just a nice way to be able to talk about where a point is or where something is increasing or decreasing. Um, so it's nice to know what the quadrant names and numbers are, um, just in case you need to reference it. Okay, so if we want to find the distance between two points, um, let's look at this example here. So we have points 1, 3, and 5, 6. So you can see why it was important that we knew how to plot points, because they're plotted right here. Now the distance is just going to be the length of the straight line that connects these two points. So if you think about it for a minute, what we could do is we could make a triangle here, okay? And if we make a right triangle, we have something where we have a height of 3, and that's just the distance basically from our y coordinates from 3 to 6, the height of 3. And then we have um, this uh, length down here of 4. And that's just the distance from 1 to 5. That's our x coordinates. So we have something that's 3, 4, and then our distance. And you might remember um, the Pythagorean theorem here, which tells us that 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to equal d squared. And if you do remember that, um, d squared is equal to 16 plus 9, which is just 25. So d is just square root of 25, which is just 5. This is a pretty typical right triangle where we have um, sides of 3, 4, and 5. You probably have heard of a 3, 4, 5 triangle before. So that kind of would help us develop uh, what is referred to as the distance formula. So if we have two points, the first one x1, y1, the second one x2, y2, then we find the distance between those two points by taking the square root of the difference between our x's squared added to the difference between our y's squared. So all we have to do is find the difference in our x's, square that, find the difference in our y's, square that, add those two numbers together, and then take the square root. So let's look at an example that we have here. So we want to find the distance between points 2, negative 4, and negative 1, 3. So we're going to use this formula down here. We're going to take the difference between our x's, we're going to square it, take the difference between our y's, square that, and then add them together and take square root. Now it's important to note that by squaring it, the order doesn't really matter that you subtract in. Um, we call it x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1 just um, for a little bit of clarity, but it doesn't really matter. So here we have negative 1 minus 2, which is going to be negative 3 squared. And then we have 3 minus negative 4, which is going to be 7 squared. 
Now, if you did it the other way around, you would have, let's see, we'd have 2 minus negative 1, which would give us 3 squared. So this would be positive 3 squared. And then we'd have negative 4 minus 3, which would give us negative 7 squared. And down here we have a 7 squared. It doesn't matter because anytime you square a number, it's always going to be positive. So when you square negative 3, that's just negative 3 times negative 3. Get, that gives you a positive 9. And when you square 7, you get 49. So we have square root of 9 plus 49. So we add those two things together, which is 58. And then what we want to do, we want to use some of the things that we learned about radicals in the past and see if we can simplify this. Um, and this one actually, I think if you work through it, there are not any perfect squares that go into 58. In my math lab, though, you might be asked for an exact answer, which would be square root of 58, and then an approximate answer, which if you type into your calculator, if you hit your square root button and then 58, hit enter or equals, you'll get 7.62. So the 7.62 is your approximate answer, square root of 58 is your exact answer. So that's how you use the distance formula. So let's look at the midpoint formula as well. So if we have um, two points, again, P1 is x1, y1, P2 is x2, y2. M is going to be called our midpoint, okay, we're going to just call it x, y. So our midpoint is going to be um, two points, all right, it's the point that's in the middle between the two. This is a little different. We're adding instead of subtracting, and then there's no squaring or square roots or anything like that. This is a little easier. All we have to do is just add our x coordinates and divide by 2, add our y coordinates and divide by 2, and then those two things together give us our midpoint. Basically, all we're really doing is we're taking the average between both points and then sticking them together in a pair. So, Let's say we want to find the midpoint of the line segment from 4, negative 2 to 2, negative 5. All right, so we have our two points. All we have to do is just to find our x, we just add our two x coordinates and divide by 2, so we're just finding the average. So we take our, x, our first x coordinate, which is 4, add our second x coordinate, which is 2, and divide that by 2. So we have 6 divided by 2, which gives us 3. Now if you think about what number is in the middle between 4 and 2, you'd be able to come up with 3 as well. So you really don't have to show this work here. So our x coordinate is going to be 3. To get our y coordinate, we just take negative 2 plus negative 5. Okay. Now negative 2 plus negative 5 is the same thing as negative 2 minus 5, which is going to give us negative 7 divided by 2. Or you could write it as negative 3.5. Just pay attention to whether they want a decimal or a fraction answer. So our midpoint, we write it as um, a coordinate. It's going to be our x-coordinate first, which is 3, and then our y-coordinate, which is going to be negative 7 halves. So that's our midpoint. So if we look at it on a graph, we have our first point at 4, negative 2. That's this right here. Our next point at 2, negative 5. If we connect these with a straight line, our midpoint is just the one that's smack dab in the middle, which is just going to be at 3, negative 3 and a half. Okay, let's take a look at section 2.2 now. This goes through the graphs of equations in two variables, some intercepts, and symmetry. So let's first determine whether a point is on the graph of an equation. So let's say we're given this equation here, negative 3x plus y equals 6. And we're given three kind of coordinates here, and we want to determine if these are on the graph. So this should be fairly easy. All you have to do is just do this one by one. And you determine if you get something that makes sense or not. If you get something that makes sense, then yes, your point is on the graph. If you get something that doesn't make sense, then no, your point is not on the graph. So if you look here, 0 is my x coordinate and 4 is my y coordinate. So I'm just going to plug those into my original equation. So I just have negative 3 times 0, that's my x, plus 4 because that's my y. And if you think about it, negative 3 times 0 is just 0, so 0 plus 4 is 4. And then we have 4 equals 6. Now, that doesn't make sense because 4 is not 6, obviously. So that one is not going to be a point. But if we look at this one right here, if we plug negative 2 in for x and 0 in for y, we have negative 3 times negative 2, that's what's right here, 
plus zero, that's our y, equals six. So six equals six, so that one works, okay? And then if we do this one here, we plug negative one in for x, so we have negative three times negative one, that's going to be a positive three, plus three, because that's our y, equals six. We know that three plus three is equal to six, so that one is also a point. And if we look at a graph of this, the graph of the equation negative three x plus y equals six looks like this blue line that's right here. You can see that we have points, let's see, negative two, zero, that one is on our line, and negative one, three is also on our line. If you look at point zero, four, um, so that's right on our y-axis, it does not match up with these other two, so it's clearly not part of our line. So when we plug it in, um, it did not work because it was not actually on our equation. Okay. So let's first learn how to graph an equation by plotting points. So let's say we have the equation y equals 2x plus 5. So what we want to do is we want to just pick some values for x and figure out what y is. Now you'll see this if column here, if x equals 0, if x equals 1, if x equals negative 5, if x equals 10. Now these could be anything, okay? So these were just kind of randomly chosen so that we get a sampling of different points on the graph, but it really doesn't matter. One thing that you can do that I typically suggest to my own students is that you can pick points from x equals negative 2 all the way up to 2, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and that should give you plenty of points for a graph. Now, that will always work, but another thing you want to think about is pick points that are going to be nice for you. So if you have kind of maybe a nasty-looking equation where you have a fraction, you want to pick x's so that that fraction is going to cancel out. So just make sure you're thinking about it so that you end up with nice points for yourself. Okay, so all we have to do is just plug in our values for x. They were chosen for us as 0, 1, negative 5, and 10. We just need to find our y, which is what's done in this column here. So if we plug 0 in for x, we just have 2 times 0 plus 5. We know 2 times 0 is just 0. 0 plus 5 just gives us 5. So our y value is going to equal 5. And we'd always like to write these as a coordinate just so we keep everything really organized. So we say when x is 0, y is 5, so our coordinate is 0, 5. Now for the next one, x equals 1. We just plug 1 in for x, so we have 2 times 1 plus 5. 2 times 1 is just 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. So y is going to be 7 in this case. So our point is actually x equals 1, y equals 7, so it's just 1, 7. Now for negative 5, when we plug that in, we have 2 times negative 5, which gives us negative 10 negative 10 plus 5, so be careful with your negatives, but let's say you owe someone $10 and you've given them 5, now you only owe them 5, so it's negative 5. So when x is negative 5, y is also negative 5. It's fine to get the same number for both. So your point on your graph is going to be negative 5, negative 5. And when we plug x equals 10 in, 2 times 10, that should give us 20. 20 plus 5 is 25. So when x is 10, y is 25. So our point is 10, 25. So if we want to go ahead and graph these, all we have to do is we need to make sure we draw a grid that's big enough to accommodate all the points that we picked. But you'll see here we have 10, 25, 1, 7, 0, 5, negative 5, 5. And we have a nice line here. You'll notice um, another way of doing this if you're already comfortable with um, slope and the y-intercept, you can use your slope of 2 and your y-intercept of 5 in order to graph it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's graph another equation by plotting points. This time let's graph something that's not going to be linear. So we have y equals x squared. So this one, they picked a bunch of points all the way from negative 4 to 4. Really, if you pick from negative 2 to 2, you will end up with enough points to figure out what your graph looks like. But keep in mind that all of these numbers for y are going to be positive because anytime you square any number, no matter if it's positive or negative, it stays positive. So um, what you need to keep in mind if you're putting these in your calculator, you might notice if you just punch in negative 4 and then square it, you'll get a negative 16. The reason for that is because you actually need parentheses around your x. 
So your calculator does follow order of operations for you, so you need to tell it what to do first if you want it to do something other than just typical order of operations. So what you need to do is you need to put a parenthesis in your calculator first, negative 4, end your parenthesis, and then square it, and then that will get you the correct answer in this column here. So negative 4 squared is going to be 15, or sorry, 16, negative 3 squared is going to be 9, negative 2 squared is going to be 4, negative 1 squared is going to be 1, 0 squared is just 0, and then 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the same as their negatives. So it's still just 1, 4, 9, and 16. Now we write them as coordinates here, again, just to stay a little bit organized, but you don't really have to do this. It's just a nice thing to do. And if we plot these points, negative 4, 16, 4, 16, negative 3, 9, 3, 9, negative 2, 4, 2, 4, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and 0, 0. You'll notice pretty quickly this is definitely not a line. This is a parabola. Okay, This is what graphs that have an x squared look like. They might be shifted or flipped or stretched or compressed, but in general they look like this kind of U shape. Okay, um, one thing we want to talk about in this section is intercepts. So there are a couple of ways of finding intercepts. We can be given a graph and we can be asked what the intercepts are, or we can be given an equation and asked what the intercepts are. So um, one thing we just want to look at first is what is an intercept. Now an intercept is anywhere that your graph touches or crosses an x or a y axis. So if you look at this blue line here, we don't know what the equation is, but we can see where our intercepts are. So we have an x-intercept right here because our graph has touched our x-axis, and we have two more x-intercepts over here because our graph has crossed our x-axis in these points. And we also have a um, y-intercept up here where our graph crosses our y-axis. So let's say we're given some kind of crazy graph like this. It's just sort of a squiggle. We definitely don't know the equation. We're not going to really deal with graphs that look like this in this class. But um, we want to go ahead and find the intercepts. So I don't think they're listed, but we'll, we can list them together. Um, let's list our x-intercepts first. So we're just going to look along our x-axis. We want to find anywhere that our graph touches or crosses. So you'll notice the first one, it's going to just touch our... Um, x-axis at negative 3, 0. So that's one of our x-intercepts. 3 halves 0 is another one. That's about 1.5 and 0. Okay, so it's right between 1 and 2, smack dab in the middle there. And then 4.50. Okay, so those are our x-intercepts. You'll notice it is no coincidence that all of our x-intercepts have y values of 0. Okay, so you see a 0 here, a 0 here and a 0 here. That is how we find x-intercepts is by setting y equal to 0. Now let's also look and go ahead and see what our y-intercepts are. So we're going to look up and down we're going to look vertically to see what our y-intercepts look like and it looks like we have one at 0, 3, 0, negative 4 thirds, and 0, negative 3.5. Now, again, just like the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts also all have something in common. And if you look at your y-intercepts, they all have 0 in place of x. Okay? And again, that's no coincidence because in order to find y-intercepts, we set x equal to 0. So that's kind of what you could think of as the definition of x and y-intercepts. The sort of definition of an x-intercept would be the x values when y is equal to 0. And the y-intercepts would be the y-values when x is 0. So this is kind of what we were just talking through, procedures for finding intercepts. So in order to find the x-intercepts, if there are any, of the graph of an equation, we let y equal 0 in the actual equation, and then we solve for x, where x is going to be some real number. Now to find any y-intercepts, again, if there are any, because you could end up with no x and no y-intercepts, or one or the other. Um, we just let x equal 0 in our equation, and we solve for y. So it's always the opposite. So for x-intercepts, we set sorry, for x-intercepts, we let y equal 0. For y-intercepts, we let x equal 0. Okay, so let's say we're given this equation here, y equals x squared minus 4, and we want to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So in order to find the x-intercept, we let y equal 0. So I'm going to plug 0 in wherever I see a y in my equation. So I just have 0 equals x squared minus 4. 
So what I'd like you guys to do, I accidentally just showed it on the screen there for a second, but what, I, what I'd like you to do is take a second and see if you can figure out what to do with this equation. You have zero equals x squared minus four. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute. Maybe you can factor it or do something else to it. I wanna see if you can go ahead and solve that. So again, just giving you guys a minute to see if you can find your x-intercepts here before I show it on the screen. Okay, so hopefully re you remembered that this is the difference of two perfect squares. And if you did, that's great. It does factor into x plus 2, x minus 2. And you could check this by foiling this back out and making sure that it matches with the original, which it does. The other option you have is you could add 4 to both sides. Okay, so you could do plus 4 on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and you would end up with something that looks different in this second step. You would have 4 equals x squared. Um, now we use our zero product property if you've set it up like this and you just set each thing equal to zero So from this factor right here you get x equals negative 2 from this factor over here You get x equals positive 2 those are going to be the x-intercepts and you always want to write them as coordinates So make sure you're paying attention in math lab, but typically they want them written as coordinates So if you want to write them as coordinates, it's going to be negative 2 0 because y is going to be 0 when we have an x-intercept and 2 2, 0, because again, y is 0 when we have an x-intercept. A very common mistake is to write these together as one coordinate, negative 2, 2. That is not correct. You need to make sure if you have more than one x-intercept that you've actually written more than one point. Now, if you had done it the other way, if you had added 4 to both sides, you would have x squared equals 4. You'd take the square root, and you'd have to remember that when you take square root, in an equation, you should put a little plus minus out front. So we would get x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is just plus or minus 2. So you get the same two answers, just a different way. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys do this one as well. To find the y-intercept, we let x equals 0. So I just plug 0 right in here. y equals 0 squared minus 4. This should be pretty easy to evaluate. But what I want you to think about is how to get it to look like this down here where we have a coordinate. So let me give you guys, I don't know, 10 or so seconds to see if you can write out your coordinate. Okay, so you should get y equals negative 4. That's going to be your y-intercept. And in order to write that, you let x equal 0. So we put 0 in for x, and we put a negative 4 in for y. So if you want to list all of the intercepts, if it just asks you, given this equation, find our intercepts, you would write them as negative 2, 0. And then you'd put a comma, 2, 0, another comma, and then 0, negative 4, where each of those coordinates are enclosed in parentheses. Okay, we also have symmetry, okay? So a graph is said to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis if for every point x, y on the graph, x negative y is also on the graph. So if we look down here, if we have a point here at x, y, then if we flip across our x-axis, we also have a point that's at x negative y, okay? So that looks like something like this down here, this pink line and this blue line are symmetric with respect to the x-axis with each other, okay, not within the graph. So if you just look at the pink line, that's not symmetric with anything. But if you look at the pink and the blue together, together those are symmetric with respect to the x-axis. We have something that's symmetric with respect to y if for every point x, y, negative x, y is also on the graph. So if you look at this pink line, if we take it and we flip it across our y-axis, we end up with the blue part over here. So that is symmetric with respect to y. And then we have symmetry with respect to the origin, which is the one that you're probably not as familiar with yet. Um, you put negatives in front of x and y in front of this one. So um, if we have this pink part here, basically what we're doing is we're flipping it across our x-axis and our y-axis, and we end up with this blue line here. So if you think about flipping this pink line across our x-axis, so that means it would be down here, and then flip it across your y-axis as well, we end up with this blue line. 
you could think of it as flipping across y first, which ends that up over here, and then flip across x. So symmetric with respect to the x-axis, we take um, y and replace it with a negative y. Symmetric with respect to the y-axis, we take x, replace it with a negative x. In symmetry with respect to the origin, we take x, replace it with negative x, and y, replace it with negative y. So um, if a graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis and the point 3, 2 is on the graph, what other point is also on the graph? So I want you to think about this for a minute. So we have symmetry with respect to the x-axis, so that's going to be this right here. So I want, to, I want you guys to think about which point, when we have 3, 2, would you reflect across the x-axis and get? So let me give you a second to think about those. And hopefully you figured out it would be 3, negative 2. Because when we have symmetry with respect to the x-axis, we just take our y value, make it negative, and that gives us an additional point. And if you think about it, if you take this point and you flip it across your x-axis, you're going to end up right down here, which is going to be at 3, negative 2. Now, if we want to flip it with respect uh, to the y-axis, if we have 3, 2, our new point is going to be at negative 3, 2. So we take our x value, which was 3, and we make it negative, and we leave y all alone. Now origin is next. This one we make both negative, so it's going to be point negative 3, negative 2. Okay, so in order to test for symmetry, it's important that you know how to do these things. So this is something you probably want to memorize. Um, so to test for symmetry with respect to the x-axis, you replace y with negative y, and then you simplify. And if the equation results in an equivalent equation to the original, then it's symmetric with respect to x. For the y-axis, we replace x with negative x and simplify. If it's equivalent, then the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And for the origin, you can probably guess we replace x with negative x and y with negative y, and then we simplify. And if the equation ends up being the same as the original, then it's symmetric with respect to the origin. So for symmetry with respect to x-axis, we replace y with negative y. The y-axis, we replace x with negative x, and for the origin, we replace both. So let's test this equation, y equals x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 2 for symmetry. So to test for the x-axis, we replace y with negative y. So we have this right here. Now, there's no way to make this equation look like our original because we just have this negative sign sitting here. Even if we multiplied or divided both sides by negative 1, we'd end up with a positive y, but then our entire fraction would be negative. So that's not going to be equivalent, so it's not symmetric with respect to the x-axis. To test for the y-axis, we replace x with negative x. Again, like I was talking about earlier, we need to make sure we have these in parentheses when we square. So we have y equals negative x squared minus 9 divided by negative x squared plus 2. And if we simplify that, negative x squared is just x squared. So really what we're left with y is y equals x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 2. That is equivalent to the original, so it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And to test for the origin, we make both negative. Now, the right-hand side is going to look just like our original, but we still have this kind of negative y hanging out here. Again, if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative 1, um, we're still going to be left with a negative in front of our fraction. So that's not equivalent, so it's not symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, so let's graph the equation y equals, this should be x cubed, the 3 is cut off a little. Um, so let's graph the equation y equals x cubed by finding intercepts, checking for symmetry, and plotting points. So first let's find the intercepts. So if we set x equal to 0, we're going to get y equals 0. If we set y equals 0 and we take the cube root, we get x equals 0. So 0, 0, the origin, is your only intercept. Now in order to test for symmetry, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the previous slide. So to see if it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis, we replace y with negative y. So we have negative y equals x cubed. That's not going to be equivalent to our original, so it's not uh, symmetric with respect to the x-axis. 
if we replace x with negative x, negative x cubed is still just negative x cubed. So that's not also not equivalent to the original, so it's not symmetric with respect to the y-axis either. For the origin, though, we replace both. So what we have is we end up with negative y equals negative x cubed. So we have negative y equals negative x cubed. If we multiply or divide both sides by negative 1, the negatives both just go away, so we're just left with y equals x cubed, which is the same as our original. So this the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the origin. So now we would just want to pick a couple of points. So we have x equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we plug these in. So we're going to get 0, 0 for this first point. That was the same as finding our intercepts. If we plug 1 in for x, we get y equals 1 cubed, which is just 1. So we have 1, 1 as another point. If we plug 2 in for x, we have y equals 2 cubed, which is just going to be 8. And if we plug 3 in, we get y equals 3 cubed, which is going to be 27. So we have these four points here. We know it's symmetric with respect to the origin. So if we look at our graph here, one thing you can think about is just ignore this bottom left part for right now and plot these three po or sorry, these four points that we have. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8. 3, 27 is going to live way up here. Okay, and we didn't leave enough room for it on the graph, but that's okay. And then if we take this right-hand portion right here, and we think of the fact that it's symmetric with respect to the origin, what we can do is we can take that blue part, we can flip it across our x-axis, and then flip it across our y-axis, and we end up with this piece over here. So we end up with an entire piece that looks kind of like, like a sideways s. That's what y equals x cubed typically looks like. Again, it could be shifted left, right, up, down. It could be compressed or um, stretched, and it could be... Um, flipped upside down, something like that. Okay, in section 2.3, we're gonna talk about lines. Okay, so we're gonna talk about several different things involving lines. The first thing is slope. So it's really important to know how to calculate slope. So let's say we have two points, P and Q, okay, and the coordinates for those points are X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. They're going to be two distinct points, and X1 is not going to be equal to X2. So the slope m of the non-vertical line L containing P and Q is defined by the following formula. So really what you do is you take the difference in your y's, so you take y2 minus y1, and you divide by the difference in your x's, so you take x2 minus x1. Now it's important that the x's are not the same, okay? If x1 is equal to x2, then we have a vertical line and the slope is going to be undefined. Now if you think about it, if these two numbers are the same, when you subtract them, you're just going to get zero. And hopefully you remember, you're never allowed to divide by zero. If you do, it's going to be undefined. So your line is gonna look something like this. You're gonna have your rise and your run, okay? And this right here, the difference in your y's is going to be your rise, and this down here is going to be the run. So let's say we have this right here, find the slope of the line containing the points negative 1, 4, and 2, negative 3. Now you'll notice we have two equations for slope here. They're just flipped around from one another. And the reason that it's shown like this is because it doesn't matter what order you subtract in as long as you're consistent. So we can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's how it was written on the previous page or we could flip that around and we could do y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You just need to make sure that it's done in the same direction. So if we plug in our second y point, which is going to be negative three, and we subtract four, which is our first y, and then we divide by two minus negative one. Hopefully you remember minus a negative becomes plus. So really what we have is we have negative seven over three so our slope is negative 7 thirds. And then if we flip it around, we have 4 minus negative 3, if we do it that way, which is just 4 plus 3. And then we have negative 1 minus 2, which gives us negative 3. So for this one, we ended up with 7 over negative 3, which is still just negative 7 thirds. So this is just to illustrate that it doesn't actually matter the order that you do it in. Either way, you end up with negative 7 thirds. So we can say that the average rate of change of y with respect to x is negative 7 thirds. So that's another way to talk about slope. We can call it the average rate of change. Okay, so now let's graph a line given a point and a slope. So let's say the point that we're given is 3, 2, and the slope is 3 fourths. 
So what you want to do is you always want to draw the point that you're given first. So 3, 2 is going to be right here, okay, this point right here. And then 3 fourths, that means you're going to run over 4 and you're going to go up 3. Okay, the other option you have is you could go um, down 3 and left 4. That would also work. You would end up with a point over here that is still on your line. Let's draw one that has a negative slope now, negative 4 fifths. So again, we're going to start at 3, 2. We're going to go um, left 5 and up 4, or we could go right 5 and down 4. Either way is completely fine. What I want to point out is how these lines look different from one another. Okay, if you look at this one, 3 fourths is a positive number. If you think about walking up your line from left to right, you're going to be going uphill. Okay, that means that you have a positive slope. If you think about walking along this line from left to right, you're going to be going downhill, so that's a negative slope. Okay, so what you want to keep in mind is that every time you're drawing a line, you want to make sure that the direction of the slope matches with what you are given. So even if you went the wrong direction to begin with, you should be able to correct it by thinking kind of logically about your answer. So if you'd drawn something for this first one that was going the wrong direction, you should think to yourself, oh, it looks like that has a negative slope, and I wanted a positive slope. And then you could redraw it. The other way to think about this one, this one's kind of drawn a little backwards from how I would think about it. Probably I would go up three first and then right four. It's the exact same thing. You end up at the exact same point. It's just thinking about the directions kind of in an opposite way. Okay, now the equation of a vertical line is given by an equation of the form x equals a, where x, or sorry, um, where a is the x-intercept. So if we want to graph the equation x equals negative two, all we have to do is plot our x-intercept at negative 2, and then we just draw a vertical line that goes directly through that. So anything where you have x equals, you're going to end up with a vertical line through that point. Now, here we have point-slope form. You may have seen this before. It looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The reason it's called point-slope form is because you can clearly see that a point lives in it and a slope. m is your slope, just like it denotes um, slope on the previous slides. It's the same thing here. x1, y1 is just one point that's on your actual graph. So let's go ahead and use this. Let's say that we want to find an equation of a line with a slope of negative 3 that contains point negative 1, 4. So all we have to do is plug in the points and plug in the slope. So we have y minus 4, so we have y minus our y-coordinate equals negative 3, because that's our slope, multiplied by x minus negative 1. Now we probably want to make this look a little nicer. Go ahead and distribute your negative 3 through. The other thing you want to notice is that minus a negative becomes plus. So if y minus 4 equals negative 3 times x, which is going to give you negative 3x, and negative 3 times positive 1, which is going to give you negative 3. And if we wanted to, we could write it in um, slope-intercept form, which means that y is going to be by itself. So we could add 4 to both sides. If you add 4 to a negative 3, you're going to get a positive 1. So we just end up with y equals negative 3x plus 1. And if you think about the equation of this, we have point negative 1, 4. And a slope of negative 3 means that we go down 3 and right 1. Or we could go up 3 and left 1. The other way you can think about it is by looking at this equation here. We know that our slope is negative 3 and our y-intercept is 1 because that's this point right here. This is your b. So if we plot our y-intercept um, at 0, 1, and then we use our slope from there, we could go up 3, left 1, or we could go down 3, right 1. Okay, now let's find the equation of a horizontal line. So we're going to work a little backwards to see if we can figure this one out. So let's say that we want the equation of a horizontal line that contains the point 2, negative 4. So again, we're just going to use our point-slope form. And what you need to keep in, in mind is that if you have a horizontal line, then you have a slope of 0. So what we do is we actually plug 0 in for m, and then we plug our point in of 2, negative 4, so we have this right here, which looks a little nasty, but we're just going to simplify it. 
Now you'll notice that we just have zero times x minus two on the left hand, or sorry, on the right hand side. That's just going to be zero because zero multiplied by anything is just zero. So minus a negative becomes plus. So I just have y plus four equals zero. Now I'm going to move that four to the other side. So I get y equals negative four. So that would be the equation of a horizontal line that contains that point. And if you look at it on a graph, we just have negative four right here and it just goes um, horizontally. So the equation of a horizontal line is just going to look like y equals some number where that number b is the y-intercept. Okay, now I had alluded a little bit to slope-intercept form. This is probably the most typical form. And it looks like this, where we have y equals mx plus b. I'm sure you've heard of this before. m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. y and x are just variables. So let's say we want to find the slope and the y-intercept for this equation here, 3x minus 2y equals 6, and then we also want to graph the equation. So what we need to actually do is we need to get y by itself. So if you look at the equation 3x minus 2y equals 6, we want to move everything away from our y. So we should subtract 3x from both sides first to get that to go away from the left-hand side. So we're just left with negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 6, now the reason that we wrote it in this order is because this is starting to look like this equation over here where we have our x first and then we have a number. Now in order to get y completely by itself, we have to divide by the number that's in front of y. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative two. And we need to make sure we divide everything by negative two. So on the left-hand side, we're just left with y. When we do negative three divided by negative two, we get three halves. And when we do positive 6 divided by negative 2, we get negative 3. So our slope-intercept form is going to be y equals 3 half x minus 3. And that's just the same thing here. So if we want to graph it, we always start our graph at our y-intercept if we're talking about something that's in slope-intercept form. So the first thing you do is you go either up or down, depending on if this is positive or negative, on your y-axis. So you're going to have point zero, negative three, which is gonna be right here, and then you use their slope from there. So our rise is three, our run is two, so that means I go up three and right two. Again, I could go up three, right two. And you always wanna look at it, make sure that the direction of your slope matches what you think it should be. This line right here clearly has a positive slope, and we also have a positive number right here, so that appears to match. And that's just showing you the slope again. Okay, now we also have parallel and perpendicular lines. So two non-vertical lines are considered parallel if and only if their slopes are equal, but they have different y-intercepts. So what you'll see here is that you have two things where the rise and the run end up being the same, but they have different y-intercepts. So these two lines, these two blue lines here, are going to be parallel. So let's show that these two given lines are parallel. We have line one equals negative three x plus two y equals 12, and line two equals six x minus four y equals zero. So we're just going to get this into y-intercept form. So we're gonna solve for y. So we add three x to both sides for this line one. So we get two y equals three x plus 12, divide everything by two, so I get y equals three halves x plus six. Again, we have to divide everything by two. So we know that our slope is going to be three halves and our y-intercept is going to be six. We're going to figure out the same thing here, so we're gonna get y by itself, so we subtract six x from both sides and then divide by negative four, so we get y equals three halves x. You'll notice you have nothing here. That's just like plus zero, okay? So our slope is still three halves, but our y-intercept is going to be zero. So since these two equations have the same slope and different y-intercepts, that means that they're parallel. Now let's say we want to find a line that is parallel to a given line, given a point. So we want to find an equation for the line that contains the point negative 1, 3, and is parallel to the line 3x minus 4y equals 12. So the first thing we want to do is we need to take our line that we're given, and we need to find the slope. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve again for y. We're going to y equals mx plus b. m is going to be our slope. So we get y by itself by subtracting 3x from both sides and then dividing by negative 4. So we have y equals 3 quarters x minus 3. So our slope is 3 fourths. 
So a line that's parallel to that one would also have a slope of 3 fourths. So now we know that we want it to contain point negative 1, 3 and have a slope of 3 fourths. So if you recall, we're going to use our point slope form because we have a point and we have a slope. So we just plug everything in. So we have y minus 3, that's our y coordinate, equals 3 fourths times x minus negative 1. And we just need to make this look a little nicer. This is already done for you. I know you guys can already add fractions and all of that. Um, so this becomes x plus 1. We distribute our 3 fourths. We add 3 to both sides. So we end up with y equals 3 fourths x plus 15 over 4. So that would be an equation that is parallel to this original blue equation, but has a different um, y-intercept and contains this point of negative 1, 3. And if you look at the two equations here, the green one is this one right here. The blue one is this one right here. They have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. The green one has a y-intercept of 15 over 4, and the blue one has a y-intercept of negative 3. Okay, I think this is the last thing in this section. This is perpendicular lines. So we say that two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. So if you look at this graph down here, these two blue lines are perpendicular because together they form a 90 degree angle. And again, the product of their slopes when you multiply them is going to be negative 1. So let's say that we want to find the slope of a line that's perpendicular to um, a line with a slope of 3 fourths. So really all we need to do is just take the negative reciprocal, all right? So negative meaning that you flip the sign and reciprocal meaning that you flip the numerator and the denominator. So 3 fourths becomes 4 thirds. And since this number was positive, we make this one negative. And if you look at this, we just have something that's centered around the origin. The blue line is our slope of 3 fourths. So from the origin, we go up 3, right 4. The purple line has a slope of negative 4 thirds. So we go up 4 and left 3, or we could go down 4 and right 3. And you can see that these two lines together form a 90 degree angle, so they are perpendicular. So again, you take the negative reciprocal, one of your slopes should always be positive, the other one should be negative if you're talking about perpendicular lines. So let's say that we want to find an equation for the line that contains the point negative 1, 3 and is perpendicular to this line here. So again, we can solve for y, get our slope. We get y equals 3 fourths minus 3. I think we've done that one already. A line that's going to be perpendicular is going to have a slope that's negative 4 thirds, which we just figured out. That's the negative reciprocal of this slope right here. And if we wanted to contain point negative 1, 3, we just plug those in. Again, we have this point and we have a slope. So we just plug everything in. So we have y minus 3, that's our y coordinate, equals negative 4 thirds, that's our slope times x minus negative 1. So this is the same question, except we're finding something that's perpendicular instead of parallel. And we just simplify, we get y equals negative 4 thirds plus 5 thirds. So if we look at this one, um, let's see, the blue line is this one right here, y equals 3 fourths x minus 3, that has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 3 fourths. So we go up 3, right 4, so that gives us this blue line. And then our green line, the y-intercept is 5 thirds, which is going to be right around here. And then our slope is negative 4 thirds, so we go down 4, right 3, and we end up with this green line, which is clearly perpendicular to the blue.